Councilmember Rose is here. We may begin. Good morning. Good morning. My name is David Greenfield. I'm the councilman from the 44th Council District in Brooklyn. I'm privileged to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee. Folks, if we can get some quiet on the set, please. Thank you very much. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee and joining us today. I want to recognize that Councilmember Gentile was the first to arrive and shall be the first to leave. I want to recognize Councilmember Garodnik, Councilmember Mendez, Chair Ku, Councilmember Rose, Councilmember Barron, Councilmember Cohen, Councilmember Kalos, Councilmember Traeger, and, Count and Chair Salamanca. I want to thank Chair Salamanca, Chair Richards, and Chair Ku for their outstanding work on our land use subcommittee. Today we'll be voting to approve all the land use items on our calendar. First two items on our calendar for a vote to approve our pre-considered LUs for the siting of two 332-seat primary schools, both in Councilmember Menchaca's district. These much-needed schools are located at 4528-8th Avenue and 4302-4th Avenue in Brooklyn. We also be voting to approve LUs 6A2 and 6A3, the Whitlock and 165th Street rezoning application in Chair Salamanca's district. This application for a rezoning to change existing M11 district to an R8A slash C24 district in a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusion housing area would facilitate the development of two 14 stereo... Folks, if I can just ask if it's possible to just whisper, thank you very much, would facilitate the development of two 14-story buildings with approximately 474 units of affordable housing reserved for families making between 30 and 80% of the area median income. The two buildings would also contain community facilities and commercial space. The next item for approval is LU-684, the Lower Manhattan Plaza Applicability Text Amendment for the property in Council Virgin's District. This application would allow development sites in C6-4 districts within 50 feet of a designated retail street to take advantage of a public plaza bonus provision. The next item is also a text amendment. The next item is also a text amendment to the zoning resolution LU-689, the section 93-122 text amendment would change the zoning regulations applicable to a development site in sub area three of the special Hudson Yards district. The change would allow for a building containing Residences to be developed prior to the minimum amount of commercial floor area being developed for a zoning lot of at least 55,000 square feet, but less than 69,000 square feet. A portion of the zoning lot would be reserved for the mandated commercial space. The affected property is located in Councilmember Johnson's district. Lastly, we will be voting to approve LU 690, 704, and 705. LU 690, the Bedford Arms application, is for a private housing financing law, Article 11 tax exemption. For a period of 40 years for the 1350 Bedford development in Councilmember Combo's district, the project was approved at our last meeting. LU 704, the Habitat for Humanity Single Family Home. Phase 3 project is an application under the general municipal law for a UDAP project, 20-year real property tax exemption and waiver of area designation requirements and provisions of the charter for property is council member Miller District in Queens. LU705 is an application for 30-year tax exemption under Article 11 to facilitate the rehabilitation and preservation of property located at 233 Syverson Avenue in Council Member Cornegie's district. All the council members in their local districts are supportive of the applications that I've described. I'm actually going to come back to questions and remark in a minute, and the chair will ask the clerk to please ask Councilmember Gentile for his vote. Committee Clerk Matthew DiStefano, Committee on Land Use, Councilmember Gentile. I vote aye and all. So for the record, we are now voting in accordance with the recommendation of the subcommittees to approve reconsidered LUs 2017-5217-SCK and 2016-5647-SCK and LU 682, 683, 684, 689, 690, 704, and 705. Do any members have any questions? Do any members have any statements that they would like to make? Councilmember Machaca, would you like to make a statement? Yes. Chair recognizes Councilmember Machaca to make a statement. Thank you, Chair, and to all the members of the committees. Uh, my, my statement is short, uh, but I want to underscore how important this is to Sunset Park and the incredible overcrowded crisis where schools are operating at an average of 120% over capacity. We have two new schools on the docket. Uh, and I also want to recognize that we don't take this lightly at all as a city council when we look at landmarking uh, or landmarked buildings. Uh, we've heard the concerns and we will dedicate time and effort to build the relationships that need to be built between the preservation community 
uh, Sunset Park community and the SCA to ensure that everybody who wants to be at the table can be at the table to discuss the future of these buildings. I'm really excited for this work and I thank all of you and our community uh, who has been spearheading this energy on the ground and really changing the relationship with SCA to bring new schools. Uh, over 20% of the schools that are getting built in the city right now are, go are going to be built in Sunset Park. That's a direct relationship between the work that we're doing on the ground and connecting to government. That's how it should work, and all of you are part of it today by voting yes. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Any other Council Members have any other comments they'd like to make about this or any other projects? Hearing none, I will ask the Clerk to please call the roll. Committee on Land Use, Chair Greenfield. Aye and all. Garodnik. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Ku. Aye. Rose. Aye. Byron. I pass. Cohen. I'm going to vote aye. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote. Councilmember Kalos to explain his vote. I want to speak uh, to one of the uh, school sites in uh, Councilmember Menchaca's district. Uh, wanted to make it clear that I do have concerns about SCA or, uh, sorry, the School Construction Authority or the uh, ECF uh, targeting landmarks throughout our city and uh, using them as locations to uh, get around the landmarks law, uh, which is there to protect these buildings and demolishing them in favor of schools. Uh, I, I favor schools, we need more schools. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge and thank Councilmember Menchaca for preserving the historic facade around the building. I want to thank the School Construction Authority for agreeing to uh, coming back, come back to the council member and the uh, preservation community with whether or not the full facade can be preserved, because currently a portion of the facade is being excluded. Uh, I also want to note for the record that the School Construction Authority said that there are no other landmark sites being considered uh, and uh, that they do not plan to move forward with any others. This is not meant uh, to create precedence. Uh, this is a unique one-time situation because of an ongoing crisis. And in addition, uh, I, I support school seats anywhere in the city, and we also hope that School Construction Authority will actually build seats uh, in the Upper East Side, where we are short about 2,000 seats with very few plans, if any, to build the ones that our kids need. Uh, so that being said, I again want to th congratulate Councilmember Menchaca, thank him for his leadership, thank him for securing the preservation of most of the facade, I think about 90%, and uh, I vote aye. Thank you, Councilmember. Traeger. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 690, on which I'm voting no. I think that as we talk about the homeless crisis and the expanding numbers of homeless people, that we've got to do more to provide for housing for people who are homeless or people who are able to work but not able to pay the rent. And this project is an M squared project, which means half of this is for people who are making $100,000. And the neighborhood median income in that area, I believe, is about 40. So we're involved, our, we're putting ourselves in um, a situation where we're creating gentrification by providing housing for people who are not, who live in the community but are not able to afford. So I'm voting no on 690. Thank you. Okay, by a vote of 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the land use items printed in today's land use calendar have been adopted with the exception of LU 690, where the vote stands at 10 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you, we're gonna keep the vote open, and uh, thank you all, and hope to see you back here on the 27th. Don't take too long of a vacation, thanks.
continuation of the roll call on land use items printed in today's land use calendar. Councilmember Rodriguez. Aye. Councilmember Torres. Okay. The vote now stands at 13 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions for approval, with the exceptions of LU 690, which has now been adopted by a vote of 12 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. All right, as is our practice, we're going to keep the roll open for a few more minutes until noon, and then we will conclude the hearing.
I'm gonna vote aye, and if it's wrong, I'm gonna blame it on the when, when you come in a year from now. Oh no, you're gonna have to wait a whole year. Continuation of the roll call. Councilmember Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Continuation of roll call on land use items printed in today's land use calendar. Council Member Mealy. Aye on all. Vote stands at 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. No abstentions with the exception of LU 690. With the vote is 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the Land Use Committee meeting of Wednesday, July 19th. This meeting is hereby adjourned.